In my entire experience of teaching economics, I have come across so many questions. Questions which are puzzling, questions which are important to be understood, and questions which are intriguing. I have realized that most of these questions try to test our basic understanding of economics. So I thought of coming up with a series where we will be discovering the answers to these questions. Now these questions might seem pretty basic, but believe me, a lot of us get confused with them. So today, let's start with the demand curve. Okay, so one of the very primary lessons that we read in economics are based on the demand and the supply theory. If you have looked at the demand curve carefully, you will notice that there is something about this curve that sets it apart from the usual graphs that we plot. Usually, whenever you plot any graph on a coordinate, you put the dependent variable on the y-axis and you put the independent variable on the x-axis. But whenever you plot a demand curve, you put prices on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. This is how the usual demand curve looks like. Now we know that every graph that can be plotted on a coordinate has a functional form. And usually the functional form that we use to represent the demand curve is as follows. Quantity demanded is a function of price, which clearly mentions that quantity demanded is a dependent variable, whereas price is an independent variable. The big question is that why is there a mismatch between the functional form and the graph of the demand curve. Why are economists putting prices on the y-axis when price is an independent variable, while they are putting quantity on the x-axis which is a dependent variable? Why? And the answer lies in the concept of inverse demand function. Before we understand this concept, let's talk a bit about where this demand curve has come from. The demand curve that we follow today was given by an economist named Marshall in 1879. And the logic behind the demand curve that was given by Marshall was that he considered quantity to be in fact an independent variable and prices to be dependent on quantity. He believed that prices in the market are changing because of the changes in quantities. In fact, Marshall was not the first one to give the demand curve. There were several economists like Augustine Cournot who had plotted the demand curve in 1838 Carl Rau in 1841, Jules Dupuy in 1844, and Fleming Jenkin in 1870. All of these economists had put prices on different axes. For example, Cournot, Dupuy, and Jenkin had placed prices on the horizontal axis, whereas Carl Rau had placed prices on the vertical axis. So even historically, there have been both kinds of demand curves where prices have been put on horizontal axis or vertical axis. The point to be understood here is that the demand curve that we follow today, which is the Marshall's demand curve, the correct functional form for this demand curve is what is called as the inverse demand function. Let's try to understand this through a functional example. Let's say quantity demanded is equal to 12 minus 0.5 p where p refers to prices and in this particular functional form we assume the usual demand function where quantity is the dependent variable and prices are the independent variable. Now, let's suppose that we replace prices with quantity and quantity with prices. That is, we take an inverse of this function. The resultant function will be, after some manipulations, price will be equal to 24 minus 2 times q. This inverted function is nothing but what is called as an inverse demand function. The common mistake that we usually do when we read about the demand curve is that we consider the graph of the demand curve as this, where we take prices on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis, but we consider an incorrect functional form. In fact, the correct form is that of an inverse demand function. And if you keep this in mind, you will never get confused with why do we put prices on the y-axis? Because in this functional form, you can clearly see that prices are in fact the dependent variable. So the correct functional form for the demand curve that we use is actually the inverse demand function. Hope you have understood this concept.